Welcome back to the Shot Clock Rebooting with myself, Jason Rubin, and Andre Snellings. You can check him out on rotowire.com. You can check him out on Twitter, at Professor DRZ. He's a busy, busy individual. Uh, I saw recently, Andre, by the way, that uh, I know some Yahoo Sports stuff going on, Rotowire stuff going on, some podcasts going on, and, of course, some TYT Sports going on. How you doing, Andre? Doing good. It's a Friday. Life is, ha- life is happy. Right. Friday is always a, 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 a great mood in, in the studio here in L.A. I'm sure it's still somewhat warm, I would hope, in Michigan. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a false hope. Um, <laughs> my friends were all, were all making fun of me yesterday because um, I had a turtleneck on. And I was like, dude, it's cold. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't live in California or the South. I, but, can't wait. Know, good. I can't wait for the Shot Clock turtleneck edition. It's coming. That's a promise <laughs> to whoever is watching. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm not scared. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So uh, the NBA has started, and uh, we are like two giddy schoolboys when we're with our league pass, watching every which game we can, because uh, that's really what I enjoy most about sports, is being able to watch, consume, and then talk about it the next day. So the Oklahoma City Thunder coming into the season had so many storylines. You have Russell Westbrook coming off an MVP-esque uh, campaign almost single-handedly taking to the playoffs and of course now there's a sense of normalcy as ESPN put it back with Oklahoma City because Kevin Durant is back and you saw him when he walked out onto the court he's cracking smiles he couldn't contain how much he wanted to be there so the Thunder and the Spurs play a great game 112 106 there's so much to discuss from that but the real question becomes is this the beginning of an Oklahoma City championship run with Kevin Durant that we've been waiting for, or is it just the end of what will be of Oklahoma City and the whole team is done after this year? Andre, your thoughts? I don't think that the Thunder are going to win the title this year. Um, I think they can be really good. Um, they, They have a lot of talent, but I feel like Westbrook and Durant, what they're best at, overlap so much that you start getting diminishing returns. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that that they'll end up at the top of the heap. Right. And what's and it's amazing because Durant's like the big storyline that comes back and Durant like has a great three pointer to really stretch the lead at the end of the game. One of the major problems which I know you talked about a lot last year uh, in your articles was that they couldn't close out games. And Westbrook mm-hmm. uh, would put up these triple double numbers and they wouldn't show for it. The record didn't reflect, wow, Westbrook's got 40, 20, and 10. And they'd lose. And you go, how is that even statistically possible? But so Durant's back. He's rolling off screens from a Bach and, and hitting these, and these f- easy-looking twos <laughs> over Kawhi, over the defensive player of the year. And I know, I know, I know. It's one game. I know. We know he, we're going to make way too many conclusions off of this. But in general, I, I do believe that the, the Thunder – can make a run in the West just because that's how good Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook are. But you make an interesting point. You say the diminishing returns between the two. Have you, do you think there's a chemistry issue between those two guys when they play? See, it's interesting because, honestly, I, think, I don't think that there's a chemistry issue per se the way that Shaq and Kobe used to not like each other. Mm. You know? that's a great but their point. games meshed perfectly. You know, I, I, I don't have any sense that Durant and Westbrook don't like each other. I think their games just kind of rub against each other, you know, not quite as much as say Dwayne Wade and, and LeBron James is used to where mm-hmm. they essentially played the same way. Um, Westbrook and, and Durant play differently. Westbrook could be more of an initiator, Durant a finisher, but both of them are high volume, high usage scores. Durant can play off the ball, but he's not at his best if he's not on the ball. And I think ultimately they both know it on some level I think that Durant doesn't like to hear it. I think that yeah, his issues kind of he's had recently with the media stemmed from everybody saying, hey, is there a problem between you and Westbrook and him not liking that? But I think at the end of the day, it's the truth. And I, I think that's ultimately what, what kind of limits the team. Right. And you bring up the media, which across this whole season long, I mean, look, the Thunder are going to win games. We know that. And they're going to make the playoffs in the West, barring any freak injury. And even so, if there was and it takes one of these two guys out, we kind of know that they still have a chance to compete for a playoff spot, as we saw last season. But the media is going to completely overplay the where is Kevin Durant going to go? Is he going to stay? And then it's amazing because they're going to probably underplay what's going to happen with Russell Westbrook. And it's what I find so interesting about this whole thing is 
the Thunder fan base, which are a, a, an electric fan base, they really are for a city that you wouldn't necessarily think would be diehard basketball fans based off the football culture that takes place in the state. They come over from Seattle. Durant gets drafted in Seattle. They come over to Oklahoma City. And then for years, it's, you know, they have arguably the best player in the NBA, always top three in Kevin Durant as he got better. And they get Russell Westbrook. And they come close to winning a championship. They make the finals. And then a little bit of injury problems, and now we get to 2015. So with the competition around them, I think we're both on the same page here. It doesn't seem likely that they'll win. But what's going to happen with the Oklahoma City Thunder if they both leave which more likely than not seems like it's going to happen, is there a fa does that fan base still sit there, or do they bandwagon with Durant over to potentially the, the rumors of the Washington, New York, L.A., Chicago, wherever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be a very painful fate for both of them to leave. Um, and, you know, all of the Seattle Sonics crew that, you know, feels like Oklahoma stole their team, I'm sure they would be like, karma, you know, like, right. let's come back around. I feel like one of them probably is gone. You know, um, yeah. I think ideally Oklahoma City would build around one of them and build a strong cast that completely suits their strengths. And and because honestly, you know, you talked about Durant being a top three player in the NBA. I think Westbrook's right there now. Mm -hmm. Like I don't I don't even think it's a one A and one B anymore. I think that they are very similar caliber players, and so. You know, and honestly, and James Harden was a third. They had three of them. They've already let one go. So crazy. That I don't know if I would have let go. It is so crazy to think, like, just, it, it, I love the what if. The mm -hmm. what if Harden was still there. Oh, my God, that mm -hmm. team. They might score 173 points a game. Obviously an exaggeration. They can't <laughs> score that many points a game. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, there will be diminishing returns. But, one, there will be a much stronger team if Harden was still there. I'm, I'm still not really sure the logic of letting him go. And two, when you start looking at the future scenarios, Harden, I think, fits better with Russell or with Durant than either Durant and Westbrook fit with each other. You know, I think he would have been like a, that would have been a nice two piece, either one of them, um, because he could play off the ball and on the ball. And I, I think it would have worked out. So, you know, for multiple reasons, um, Houston is celebrating and Oklahoma City is sad. And if they had all three of them and all three of them leave within a few years of each other, that would just be mean. Like, I don't even, I don't even want to contemplate that for, for that fan base. One of my best friends just moved out there to be a, a professor at Oklahoma uh, University. So, you know, Josh, for your sake, I, I hope that one of them stays. <laughs> it would be so very rude of these guys to do that, to take such huge money from other places. But uh, <laughs> you know what? To close it out, as Kobe Bryant has said multiple times in, over the last year, you don't win championships by throwing your arms over each other and singing Kumbaya. And that is something that he obviously made work with Shaq, who he seemed to really dislike when they played together. There's a ton that could be talked about in that direction. But again, with those two guys alone, we know that there's a competitive value for that team, and they're going to be one of the more fun storylines to watch this year. So now we throw to the comments section, because we want to know what you guys and girls think. Uh, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, are the Thunder going to win a championship this year, or is this the beginning of the end of Oklahoma City? Uh, one last prop, Billy Donovan gets a, his first win, totally overshadowed by the fact that Durant was back and Russell Westbrook puts up 30-plus points. But uh, there you have it. Make sure to follow Andre at Professor DRZ and check out his articles over at Rotowire. And pretty much if you go to any sports site nowadays, it seems like he'll be there, uh, including TYT Sports. Make sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.